We're learning the Weimar, this Hasidic discourse of the Rebbe Rashab. And the Rebbe is explaining basically what Gan Eden is, what's the paradise, different levels of paradise, etc. So I, I would recommend let's start from the previous paragraph that we learned already, but in order to pick up the, the subject. The, the paragraph is on page 3 at the end. It's known that we have two levels of Ganeiden, of paradise or whatever. Ganeiden be'etzem, the thing itself of Ganeiden, and the additional lights, energy, whatever, that is brought down, projected, through working the whatever work you have to do in Ganeiden. This, what it means is, it actually sounds strange, but it's very easy, like, you have a flour and you can, you can eat quote unquote the flour or you can mix it with water and make a bread so you have flour itself okay you have something but it's better when you work on it so you have ganadin just by itself and then you have whatever whatever you get after working the ganadin like just like a garden that you improve it through working the garden regarding the ganeid in the paradise it's written that god planted and how is it the word god written two names like a complete name of god this means there's a revelation of shema vaye the holy name or etc etc in ganeid However, even though this comes from a very holy place and there's a very holy revelation, blah, blah, blah. However, this is the energy that belongs to the Ganeiden. There's a whole change of worlds and change of levels, etc., etc. That's what you get in Ganeiden. It's known that the difference between Ganeiden and the rest of the worlds is in two things. It's a technical thing, so it doesn't really matter if we don't understand the whole thing, but the light that invests in the worlds, come, that light comes from the seven lower levels of whatever level, it doesn't matter. Seven lower levels, so let's call them just lower levels. However, in Ganeiden, it's a revelation of the first higher levels. This is exactly as the difference between intellect and emotion. In the rest of the world, emotions. In Ganeiden, intellect. So, okay, it's a higher revelation. Like the, the type of revelation is a higher revelation. We have base. <clears throat> the second difference between Ganeiden and the rest of the worlds, the Beoila Monstraki Dias Amitsius. In the worlds, there's a knowledge of God, but just the fact that He exists. But we don't understand Him. We just know that He exists. And in Ganeiden, you have a revelation of the essence of God. Like you can see Him, Himself. Then there's a parenthesis in, in a different Hasidic discourse, and the notes over there. That's what it seems, that that's what it means the real Ganeiden, so to speak, the revelation of God. You can see Him. And these two ideas, the type of revelation and how you actually perceive God in the world or in Ganeiden, these two ideas have a hatalia, they depend one on each other, because the revelation is a lower revelation, so you only know that God exists, but you don't understand Him. And because in Ganeiden, because that's I'm, I'm sorry that's the oil of the worlds but in Ganeiden that's what I meant in Ganeiden because the revelation comes from a very high level then you can see him all of this is just how God fills the worlds how he reveals himself in the worlds according to the level that the worlds can actually sustain and, and etc in a different place, there's a deeper explanation. Even the essence itself of Ganeiden, you can't perceive God as He is. Rather, that He exists. Just that 
the way you perceive God in Gan Eden is a higher level the, than the way you perceive God in the rest of the worlds. Because Gan Eden is in this world, this holy world called Bria, creation, whatever. And in that world shines the levels of wisdom and understanding of the world of creation as it's written in a different place. The Sham, Raki That level represents, even it sounds like a very holy thing, but because it belongs to the world of Bria, creation represents the knowledge that God exists, but not the understanding of what God is, actually. Maimar, as it's written, as it's written by our sages, that nobody can see me and live, says God. And when actually you can read live, vachai, live, not don't read live, rather chayos, like animals, even the angels can't understand me. And the angels live, so to speak, in the world of Bria, creation, whatever, a little bit of Kabbalah. But the point is, he's trying to explain what Ganeiden is. That's the revelation of God, that's what it means. The same thing happens in Ganeiden. Okay, that's Ganeiden, a revelation of God. Like there's a fixed amount of revelation of God. It's just like, it's an example only, when you have a son or daughter, whatever, it's the same thing, and you give them monthly an, an amount of money to do whatever you want, go buy yourself sweets or whatever you want. You have $10 a month, do whatever you want. But if you work, I'm going to give you five more. Oh, okay. So there's a fixed amount. Ten, you're going to get. Don't worry. Even if you sleep the whole day, I'm giving you $10. If you work, oh, now you get more. This is what he's explaining, but in the level of Ghanaian. Ghanaian, there's a certain revelation of God, a fixed one. Okay, you can say deeper, not deeper, I don't know, strange names, whatever. There's a revelation of God. But if you work, oh, I'm going to give you more. You're going to see, you're going to see more. That's what he's explaining in this paragraph. But if you want to project Atsilus, emanations, a deeper revelation of God, even in the lower worlds of Bria, Yitzira, Asiya, creation, formation, and action, you're going to have to work. That requires work. You want a deeper revelation? You want, quote, unquote, more money? You have to work. More, work more? Whatever the case is, the idea of Gan Eden is how God fills the world. It's a fixed thing according to what the worlds can actually uh, get. But if you work, you can project how God transcends the worlds, beyond how God fills the worlds. This is what it means that God put the first man in Gan Eden to work, in order that he should work over there, work. Again, you get a fixed amount of revelation of God, go work and you're going to get more. And through his work of men in Ganeiden, he would project the main revelation of the presence of God down here, that means in Ganeiden, that's where he lived, etc. Okay. So the Rebbe now has a question. You're telling me, most of the cases, the questions are not written in the, in the discourses. You have to like, guess what the question was. So you're telling me that Ma, the first man, he worked in Ganeiden, and therefore he got a higher revelation. Nice. But today we also get this higher revelation. Go do mitzvahs, go do the commandments, and you're going to get the same revelation. What are you telling me about Gan Eden? And I don't care about Gan Eden. I live down here, and I get the same thing. This is what he's asking. Even though, it, now, today, Gam Aksha, now, Mamshich, Imalide Mitzvahs, Bechina, Sevi, we can project through the commandments the level of the transcendence of God. In Ken, if so, wait a second. When man was in Ganeiden, what did he project down through a void, through work? Save of Kolal, how God transcends the worlds. And right now, what do we project? Save of Kolal, the same thing. So what's the difference between Ganeiden and here? 
In other words, uh, Travis is going to say this, Im Ken, the first line, Ma'u Inyan de Koide Machet. What happened really before man, the first man, uh, sinned? It's the same thing. What difference does it make? Whether you sin or you don't sin, you project the same thing. There has to be some kind of difference. Kasher by Yenichu Eden, before he sinned, when, man, when God put man in Gan Eden, What's the difference between that particular time and now? As Davka Haya Ikar Shina Betachtoinim, you can you're telling me that only there in Gan Eden, before he sinned, when God when God put him in Gan Eden and told him go work, there he could project the main revelation of God in this work. Not now. We do the same thing now through mitzvahs. So what's the difference? The The idea is like this. In a Muban, it's understood the Einoid Dome. It is an Aramaic, it's full of Aramaic words. It's my name. Einoid Dome Avoida, Vegan Eden, Legave Avoida, Achashe Nigrash Hula. It's completely, it's understood, completely not the same how the man, first man, worked in Gan Eden. It's impossible to compare to how we work after he was kicked out, even himself, how he worked outside of, a, of the Gan Eden when he was thrown out. Don't compare working in Gan Eden or, or working in the world. It's not the same. Don't come to compare things. Are you telling me you project the same thing? No, 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 no. No comparison. Why not? We are a fresh difference is like this. This paragraph is difficult like the text, but the idea is not so difficult. Just the text is a little bit tough to read. So let's go. You're, if you want to compare how God worked in Gan Eden and then how, work, how he worked when he was thrown out, I'm going to give you two uh, ideas that are so different that when you compare these two ideas, you're going to get what I'm saying. <laughs> this is what the Rebbe is saying. What are these two ideas? It's like the difference, like the, the farness, so to speak. Rihuk means far of the value between receiving a, re a, a reward or being punished. Like, of course, you can't compare when a father is happy with his son, hello, I'm so happy, I'm going to give you a hundred dollars more. Or where the, where the father is saying, you did such a terrible thing, I'm going to punish you. Don't compare. It's, uh, of course, two different <laughs> worlds. Okay, so how men worked in Gan Eden? It's a complete different thing as how he worked outside of Ghana. Like the difference between these two ideas, punishment, uh, I'm sorry, reward and punishment. And he's going to explain. The Ghana who at al Right now, I mean, after the scene and after so many years, etc., etc., Ghana the paradise, is the place, quote unquote place, it's not a physical place, where a person receives his uh, reward after working a number of years in this world, etc., etc., you pass away and you go to Gan Eden. Okay, so there you receive the reward for all the good deeds that you did down here. Okay. Umashe Nigrash, and the fact that he was thrown out, this was a punishment because of the sin of eating of the fruit of the tree, etc., etc. So you're talking about two things. On one hand, Gan Eden by itself, it's reward, but man was kicked out, thrown out of Gan Eden, and that's a punishment. Don't come to tell me, it's impossible to say, says the Rebbe, that the reason why the first man was, was thrown out of Gan Eden is because of the reason that the Torah says. Now, maybe he's going to send his hand into the tree of life and he's going to live forever. Also, I'm going to kick him out, throw him out of Gan Eden. That's not the problem. God was not worried that man would do a, a more terrible sin, even, than what he did. That's not the problem. Why not? How do you know? Maybe he was actually thrown out because you ate one thing, don't eat the second one. I'm going to throw you out. No. He was thrown out because this was a punishment. How do you know this? The Kamma Drachim Lefano Mizbara Chulei. The Rebbe answers like very quickly. 
there are so many ways in front of God, etc. Like, God can prevent a person to do whatever he wants when he wants, when God wants. I mean, he has so many ways of preventing us of doing things. So now he has to kick, throw out, throw out, I'm sorry, um, throw out uh, first men from the Ganadin because maybe he's going to eat from this tree. Forget it. God can do whatever he wants. He doesn't need to throw out a person of a place so he doesn't mess up the place. He has other ways of preventing this person from messing up. Ah, but he was thrown out. So this means it, it was a punishment. Second idea, moreover, the gun, moreover, the fact that the Torah says that God threw, sent, I'm, not, I'm sorry, sent the first man to work the land, the earth, that he was taken from. This is what the Torah says, okay? The Chiyera, apparently, needed, I think, says the Rebbe, apparently, I, I can think, the Asher Lukach Hu Nesina, Nesina Stam, there's a word missing over there, al la avoid. The fact that the Torah says that first man was taken from the earth, I'm going to explain, I'm translating and then, and then I'll explain. This is a reason of why he has to go and work. What is the Rebbe saying? If you look at the posuk, at the verse, let's go just one line before. The verse says, Translating like literally, he was sent, the first man sent to work on the land, on the earth, whatever, that he was taken from. The verse is saying words that are completely unnecessary. We know already from before that God was, uh, I'm sorry, man was created from the earth. We know this, the title says it. So the, per the verse should have said, Point. Man was sent out to work the land. That's it. Why is the Torah adding Asher Lukach Misham? Ah, you know what? Man was taken from the land. What do I care? I know this already. Why are you repeating things? So the Rebbe is saying maybe this means that the second part of the verse, Asher Lukach Misham, that man was taken from the land, that's the reason why he has to go work the land. What does that mean? Hainu. That means the Avoida Tzri Chalia is Adama. Your work has to be on land. In other words, I'm like saying things that I should say later, but it's going to be easier to understand. In other words, man was born to work. It's a verb, actually. Man was, got to, was born to toil, to work, whatever, to make an effort in life. You can make the effort in Gan Eden, that's very nice, or you can make the effort outside of Gan Eden, but you're going to have to work anyway. That's why you, cre you were created for. I mean, the whole humankind, that's what he's talking about. Jews, non-Jews, doesn't matter, doesn't make a difference. You were born to work. Where are you going to work? That's your decision. Okay, you sinned. You ate from the tree, from the fruit, whatever. You didn't have to eat. So, it's not that, now you have to work. What do you mean now you have to work? I had to work before also. No, now you're going to work outside of Ganadin. Why? Because you were taken from that place so you're going to have to work in that place that we were taken from. Maybe the work could have been somewhere else. I don't know why, where, okay, we have to use the imagination. But why does it have, to, why does the Torah repeat that man was taken from that place? Because it's explaining, that's where he has to work. You have to go to your own source and repair your source, and then you can go back to Ganeiden. Let's see how the Rebbe says. Shechutz le Ganeiden now you have to work in the land, in, within the parentheses, that is outside of Gan Eden, because you were actually taken from there, so you have to work there. Because if you go on to tell me that now you have to work, and that's the punishment, you have to go and work, etc., etc., I'm kicking you, I'm throwing you out of Gan Eden, now you have to work. So, if the, this is the whole thing, God should have put the first man outside of Ghanaian in the first place. Now, like, in other words, maybe to be more clear, the, the point here is not that he has to work. The point here is where do you have to work. So it's, the punishment itself is, now you're going to have to work 
but outside of Ganeida, not inside of Ganeida. I'm going to throw you out of Ganeida. That's the punishment itself. Not the fact that you have to work. Let's divide, says the Rebbe, so to speak. Let's divide this in two parts. On one hand, you have work. Work you have to do inside of Ganeida, outside of Ganeida, in any stage of your life, you're going to have to work. If you're young, so go and, and carry boxes in the, in, the, whatever, in the port. If you're older, okay, maybe you have to sit and then edit text. I don't know, whatever. You, but you're going to have to work. You're not going to save yourself from working. Now the question is, what's going to be the work? How is it going to be? Okay, that's a good question. I'm going to punish you. Now go work outside of Gan Eden. It's clear that from the beginning God wanted men to work and in Gan Eden, in that place. Of course I want you to work inside, outside, wherever. But in the first place God thought you should work in Gan Eden. And that's how it works. I'm sorry. And that's how it should have been, because God made the world, the man. I'm sorry, righteous, in the, in the right place, in the right time, etc., etc. And the fact that man was thrown out and sent to work, that's That's the punishment. You're going to hope you're going to work somewhere else. That's the punishment. Not that you are going to work. They did like this. So first of all, the Rebbe made clear one point. The point is what's first of all, being thrown out of Galatia is a punishment. That's the first of all. And second of all, the fact that you have to work, it's not a punishment. That you have to work. That's why you you were created for. But, what's the punishment? Third point, you have to work outside of Ghanaian. We are in, you know, and the explanation is like this. Now, the fact that man was taken from the land, I mean, he was created from earth, that means the body of man. The Anishama, Anishmasa, something like this. There's a mistake in the copying over there. Anishama, yeah. The soul, it's a portion of God in, in the heavens, etc. And it's known that the earth, when, was, when it was asked to produce trees and grass, etc., etc., she changed. The earth changed the original commandment that God gave her. Gave her. She was order to produce trees that actually bear fruit that's the regular translation but in, in the more uh, liberal translation it's eight three that the wood of the the, the 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 wood of the tree itself would be a fruit you could eat the wood also or it's a tree and also it produces fruits that means this is the words of our sages the Taste of the wood should be the same taste taste as the fruit, but it, that that's not what she did. She changed. There are, there are many explanations on this, but the most basic thing is there's an angel controlling the grasses and the trees, etc., etc. The angel misunderstood what God said and produced whatever the angel understood, but this is not what God said. So there's a change over here. Umishunze. Because of this, this gave a possibility to men to change and transgress also. Because he was taken, he was taken from earth, and the earth changed whatever God said. So suddenly, it opened up a new possibility of not doing exactly what God said. That's the reason why, at the first point, at, fer at first, his work had to be in Ganeiden. Afterwards, he was thrown out, etc. What does that mean? We're saying that the reason why the first man transgressed is because he came from earth. He was created his body was created from earth and the earth changed the commandment of God therefore that gave possibility for men to change the commandment of God 
So the Rebbe is saying, now you can understand this whole system of being in Gan Eden and afterwards out of Gan Eden. The Bethila, again, the Bethila Yagu for Mezuchak Betachis. At first, his body was completely refined, absolutely refined. And there was no mixture of bad inside men. And the light of his soul was, was shining in a revealed way. His work was not to refine. There's nothing to refine over here. He was completely refined. The place was refined and he himself was completely refined. His work was to project a revelation of the infinite light, etc. The same thing as today you find people, like very holy people, that they serve God with their souls, like they're a complete thing of serving God. Okay, very holy people. Very nice. That was first man. And this is what God wanted in the first place. In his work in Ganeiden to project light. That's what you do. You're a light worker, so to speak. Work on the light and project light. That's why God put the first man in Ganeiden. Why? It's the right place to project light. Like, I'm going to give you a job and I'm going to put you in the best place in the world where you can do your job. Ganeiden. To project light. Okay, as it's known, the karka who beginas ruch nishi begashmi. The earth is the karka ganeiden. There's a word missing over here. Karka ganeiden. The earth, the land of ganeiden, was the most spiritual thing within the physical things. The best place to be. Vein by tarevus raklar. There's no mixture mixture of bad at all. Ganeiden is the best place for men to be according to his job. That's why the place is the best place to project the infinite light of God. Okay, that's fine. We are not just the place, he continues, we have Adam and man, he should have been in Gan Eden. his body was refined, the place was refined, his job was to bring light, wow, everything fits, beautiful. But it's then you have a snake in it. Oh, wait, okay, we didn't finish. Wait. With such a because everything was refined. The place was refined, men was refined, everything was fine. Refined and fine, whatever. Light. Afterwards he sinned. His body became like an ordinary thing. Coarse. Coarse body. Now his body conceals the light of his soul. Nishtana Oifenavoida automatically the the way of the work changed. Now he has to change he has to work in a different way. The work you did before that was to bring down light and light. What, what do you mean light? Now everything is dark. There's no way of you bringing light. So you don't belong to Ganeda anymore. You can't be over here. Over here everything is light, light, light. And you're not a light person. So you know what? Get out of here. Now you have to refine. Refine yourself. Refine the world around you. What do you mean the world around you? I mean, Gan Eden, there's nothing to refine over here. But my work now is to refine. So get out of here. You don't belong here. That's why he was kicked out, thrown out of Gan Eden. He's not appropriate to be in Gan Eden in paradise. There, in Ghana, there's no mixture of bad and good. You have nothing to do over here. The work, so to speak, God, say, God would say, the work I'm expecting of you, you cannot do it over there. So I'm going to take you out of there and put you in a place where you can do your work. Mishlach, and he was sent. Now he's explaining the second part of the verse. He, he was sent to a place to work the land that he was taken from that land. Why is the Torah telling you the, the second part of the verse, that man was taken from the land? Because the Torah is explaining to you why did he end up in the land? Because actually the land gave him the strength to change. 
to sing, so to speak. There, outside of Ganeiden, his work was not to bring down godliness. No, no, no. What do you mean godliness? Him You have to work the land. Levarer You have to refine. Even though the land of Ganeiden was a refined place, outside of Ganeiden, the place was not refined. So your job now is to refine. So he changed, so to speak, the job description. Instead of bringing light, now you have to refine. I know that means to make the place around him a good place for the presence of God, etc. etc. Therefore, now all of this, now he's going to answer the question he started with. All of this is actually a, a preparation, an introduction to the answer. The question was wait a second. Man was in Gan Eden, he projected the infinite light of God, transcendence, etc., etc. Today, we are not in Gan Eden, we, could, we fulfill mitzvahs, and we also project the same light. What's the difference? Now he's going to explain. Agam shimam shichum gamach harkach, bechina serin sevesevi kolam alidea mitzvahs, even though after man sinned and he was thrown out, etc., we project the infinite light of God that transcends the worlds through fulfilling mitzvahs, Mikol Makim, however, this is the answer, there's no comparison at all to what it was before. Before, projecting light was the job description of the first man. Now, this is not the job description of man. Not at all. Kim You have to refine the world. Something changed, of course, by the sin. Okay, again, the same thing happens. The main projection of the infinite light of God is a projection from above to below. But from elevating from down up, even though there's a projection also, this is not the same type of elevation that it was before. Like in Ganeiden, you also have to elevate the world, so to speak, but it's completely different. It's different jobs, different ideas. Don't compare. Inside of Ganeiden to outside of Ganeiden. The same thing happened before. This was the, the work. What was the work? To project the transcendent, infinite light of God in a revealed way. That's why our sages say that in Ganeiden there was the revelation of the main, uh, whatever, the main revelation of the presence of God was there in Ganeiden. Because the place was prepared for that, Ganeiden. That was his job description. Project the main revelation of God in Ganeiden. And the fact that there was there needed to be a tikkun, a repair, repairing, whatever, in the whole in the whole world, that the whole world was not like the land, the earth of Ganeiden. And also you had to annul and destroy all the impurity, the nachash, the, 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 the serpent, whatever. All of that, ayabederach memeila, was automatic. It was automatic. What does that mean it was automatic? When, if men would have worked properly in Ganeiden, the rest of the world would have automatically been refined. Even though it was not refined, Ganeiden was refined, the rest of the world not. However, by doing his job, he would have projected so much light, so much goodness, that the whole world would have been fine. No problem. It would like pour out of Ganeiden the goodness, the light, and, that, and everybody would have, would have been automatically refined. But now that he's sinned, now he has to go out of Ganeiden and work outside, because there's, there's no mimela, there's no automatic effect of your job in Ganeiden, because we changed already, you're not a proper to be in Ganeiden, you don't deserve, deserve to be in Ganeiden, now you have to go out and work outside. Outside again. So what's the oinish? What's the punishment? The punishment is to be thrown out. That's the punishment, because you, you don't belong here anymore. 
So I have to throw you out. You don't belong here. 